I do tend to get carried away sometimes. This is a test and review of the Pecron E600 portable power station. I was sent this unit for evaluation and I don't get any commissions for sales. The E600 will be put through a variety of tests to see how it performs in real world circumstances. This E600 comes well packaged in a box with foam and it has a manual and quick start guide which is very well illustrated and is short and to the point. It also shows the support contact clearly in the back of the manual. Okay, so to start the review, I brought the Pecron E600 over to my workbench, and I want to go ahead and give a real quick check to see if everything's working. Now this connection is not the primary charging connection, it's actually this one right here. This is where you put the high power into. This is 32 volts to 95 volts, 300 watts max for your solar input. But I really like the fact that it's also got this 12 to 18 volt 100 watt max. This would be great for a single 100 watt panel and it uses a standard 2.1 millimeter jack. Now a 2.1 millimeter jack can't handle a lot of current, but it doesn't matter, it doesn't need to. I have a ton of these 2.1 millimeter plugs everywhere throughout my workshop. I use them for absolutely everything. And I've got these going to solar panels outside my workshop that I use for experiments. I'm just gonna take this plug and plug it right in and see. Right now the solar panels are in the dark, so I don't expect a lot of power, but let's just see what it'll do. And it's going up to yeah, 19 watts. I'm not getting any sun on the panels right now, so I don't expect a lot of power. So a really quick test is just to take a heat gun and plug it in. I'm not going to make a, a whole point out of using the heat gun. I just want to see if it can run it. And it says that the output is 1200 watts. I really don't think that I should be able to run this heat gun, but I'm going to try it anyway. So let's turn on the inverter. Very nice display. Let's plug in the heat gun. This heat gun states it's 1500 watts, and I know it has a high and a low setting. Let's try the low, and then we'll try the high. Okay, we got about 730 watts. Let's switch it over to high and see what happens. Generally speaking, a pure sine wave inverter high frequency is going to have some surge if it's a quality unit and you don't really want to push it too far beyond its rated capacity. This unit was able to handle approximately a 20% surge with no problem at all. So it surged about 267 watts in excess of 1200 watts. And I'll calculate the percentage for that later and put it on the screen. Of course, I'm not going to leave the heat gun on because it exceeds the rating of the inverter, but in an emergency, you might need a few seconds of 1500 watts to get something done. And obviously this unit has some capacity for surges and that's good. Today I'm running my air compressor in one of my sheds. There it is right there. It's a small air compressor. And I wanted to check if this E600 can run it. It should be able to, I would think so. However, an air compressor is an inductive load and it's, it's pretty hard to start. That having been said, what could go wrong? I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. Well, I did use the air compressor for a while and it, it doesn't struggle to run so that's obviously child's play for this machine. I think this E600 is a little more powerful than I'm giving it credit for. Anyway, a small one-third horsepower air compressor is not a challenge for it whatsoever. Didn't give me any trouble at all. So let's try something more difficult. Now I might be asking a little too much here. I think it's utterly ridiculous to run an air conditioner off of a portable power station or solar generator like this. However, what if you had a medical emergency and you were in a cabin that was small and you had a small air conditioner such as this one? That is a 5000 B2 standard window air conditioner and it uses about 420 watts to maybe 480 watts. Of course, the surge is going to be massive. Anyway, this is a test. I don't know if this will work or not, but let's give it a try. Well, I was a little bit surprised. It started right up. Let's take a closer look. 353 watts. 
when it's 80 to 90 degrees outside, it will be over 400 watts. The AC watt meter I'm using is showing 326 watts, whereas the unit itself, the E600 display, is showing 360. So I suspect that they're measuring it at the battery pack, and I'm measuring it on this meter only at the inverter output. Well, the sun is intermittent at best. There's not much sun this morning. So I've decided to go ahead and put out some solar panels anyway. I've got the wires coming in here, going into my shop. And I've got those cables coming in right here so I can plug them into the E600. Doing this with one hand. The maximum input is 95 volts. I should be getting about 60 volts, so I should be fine. I've turned the fan off temporarily and I'm showing the wattage input on the display. I'm getting 155 watts in very early morning conditions, kind of overcast, with three 100 watt solar panels in series. I also like how there's a voltmeter built right into the display there. A lot of these uh, portable power systems and solar generators don't even show you the battery voltage. Most people don't care what the battery voltage is, but there are a segment of customers who do care and I'm glad that they put that on there. In addition to this battery gauge, no problem there. All right, let's fire up the air conditioner and see how, how long I can run it. I was hoping this would happen. The sun came out from behind the cloud and hit the solar panels, three 100 watt panels, and the unit is able to handle an excess of 300 watts of solar input. I don't know how long it can handle it or if there's any thermal limits, but as you can see, the unit is not generating any errors. It's not complaining. It's not turning off. It's just handling the power very well. So that's good. And one more question to answer. Is it doing MPPT? As you can see, I've got my voltmeter here. And this is connected to the solar panels, the three 100 watt solar panels. And you can see the battery voltage is 26.6 volts, but the solar is hanging around 50 to 60 volts. It does jump around a lot because it appears to be hunting or tracking, and that is somewhat normal behavior for an MPPT charge controller with a tracking algorithm. They're all different, they behave different, they have different personalities. I would say this one's functioning just fine. It's keeping the voltage up pretty high. Because of the constantly changing conditions, the voltage is fluctuating quite a lot, but I would consider that to be pretty normal. It's obviously doing a PPT, it's doing a DC conversion. You can't put 54 volts into a 26 volt battery. Another thing I notice is you can actually change the display to show uh, different information, such as 19% on the battery, or you can show the voltage. It doesn't add a lot of complexity to be able to do that. It's using the same buttons, DC out and AC. When the inverter's on, you can actually change it to show the power factor. So time, 999 hours. Of course, it's saying that because I'm not running anything. Power factor. So it's actually going to show you the power factor. Very interesting that they would include such detailed information on the display. And if you're somebody who doesn't care about power factor, you don't have to look at it. You can just set it to show the time remaining. As far as this display, I like having the option to see the percentage. And for me, it's more the voltage. I'm used to reading a voltage display a lot. That's kind of my gas gauge. But they give you the option and the freedom to choose for yourself, and I really like that. I'm going to say that if this machine actually can power all this stuff and my air conditioner, that it must have passed my test. I do tend to get carried away sometimes. This is going to be kind of noisy, but that's what this test is about. Run as much stuff as you possibly can. 700 watts. Of course I can't run this all day. But it doesn't take all day to make coffee. It doesn't take all day to charge a battery either. I've got a table lamp charging three cell phones. And I've got my coffee on this induction cooktop. I'm also running my camera lighting for good measure. So there's my three phones, they're charging. There's the induction cooktop that's making coffee. It's actually uh, going to take a while before it gets going really well. It's getting there. That multimeter is just monitoring the solar panels. They're running around 60 volts. I'm running my air conditioner. And I'm charging a Ryobi 18 volt battery. That's my DC solar charger right there. Got that plugged into one of the DC ports. I'm charging a lawnmower battery off of AC. 
And I decided to plug my freezer in as well. I mean, sure, why not? I've decided if this unit can reliably run an air conditioner plus all of this other stuff and have power left to spare, it passes most of my testing. Obviously, it's not reasonable to expect this unit to power all of this stuff all day wide open. Running an air conditioner on a unit this size could be difficult, but if you have a small space to cool and you don't turn the thermostat down too cold, it's doable. With three to 400 watts of solar panels, it's absolutely doable. It's all about how you creatively manage the balance of power in versus power out. Getting through the night is probably not going to happen, but you could run it for two hours at sundown. I'm quite sure of that. I've turned the air conditioner off because it's just too loud and I can't talk over it. So what do I think about this Pecron E600 LFP so far? Well, I'm very impressed with the surge capability. I noticed that when the air conditioner started while running all of this stuff, as well as that induction cooktop, that it struggled a little bit to start, but it did start. And it's not surprising to me at all, knowing how a high-frequency sine wave inverter operates. When running something less demanding than an air conditioner, it's child's play. The air conditioner, while running other items, is actually a little bit of a challenge for this unit, and that's fine. What do I think about this unit so far? It clearly has a good strong surge capability, and it obviously doesn't have any problem starting a window air conditioner, which is notoriously difficult for a high-frequency inverter to start. A low-frequency inverter doesn't really have a problem. Thinking in terms of folks who want to get started in solar power, a portable self-contained unit like this is ideal because all you have to do is plug in your solar panels and start trying it out. You don't really have to worry about charge controllers and voltages and all that stuff. You can just plug your solar panels in and go. I'm enthusiastic about any kind of portable power station or solar generator because it allows people who want to get into solar power to learn how it works. It's not too difficult, it's not too stressful. You just plug in your solar panels and away you go. This unit in particular impresses me because it's able to run large appliances for a while. I also like this station because it has a lot of versatility. It does have a nice variety of ports and connectivity. It even has two charging inputs, which is not something I see a lot on these types of units. By the way, I had to turn off some of the machines here because they make way too much noise and I can't record the sound of me talking. So that's just temper. I'm not having any problem running them. I just don't want to listen to the sound at the moment. The air conditioner is a test I'm going to be running again. I ran the air conditioner for hours yesterday and it did just fine. Unfortunately, we had like no sun. So what I did is I charged it up and I'm going to go ahead and power up this air conditioner again. I'm running it all day and see what happens. Okay, just a quick update on the uh, air conditioner test. Second day in a row I've had this air conditioner running and the battery is now at about 70%. You can see I'm getting 457 watts from the air conditioner because it's getting pretty hot outside. 236 watts coming in from the solar panels. And so far, so good. It's getting a little bit warm on the side, but I actually don't hear the fans at the moment. When the fans do come on, they don't spin up very much. The key, of course, is to keep the air conditioner turned down only to a reasonable level and make sure that the power coming in exceeds the power going out. So 232 watts coming in, 457 watts going out, but that 457 is turning on and off, and it's not all the time, so it's able to keep the battery pretty full. Although running an air conditioner with a unit of this size is a little bit unreasonable, it's a great way to stress test it over a long period of time to see if there's any overheating problems or whatnot. I thought that three 100 watt solar panels would be pretty much good enough, but as it turns out, it's able to handle more power, so I went ahead and increased the number of panels to four. As of right now, I sense no overheating at all. The unit is getting a little bit warm, but it's not anywhere near overheating. And when the fans come on, it really isn't that loud. So it appears this unit can handle what I would call pass-through charging, or acting as a solar generator. To me, a solar generator is any of these devices that don't turn off the AC output when the solar is connected. If the solar causes the AC output to switch off, then it's just a giant power bank. This unit is acting exactly like what I would call a solar generator. You can run it 24 hours around the clock as long as you don't deplete the battery. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know, day four of the test and I'm really just hammering this thing. 345 watts in, 390 watts out. There's some heat coming out the side. I can tell it's quite warm on the inside. But even with such a punishing test, it's uh, not showing any signs of fatigue or any signs of breaking down. 
For various reasons, I have switched the solar panels to series and parallel at a lower voltage. You can see I'm getting about 34 volts there, and that works better for me. I'm now running four 100 watt solar panels, but I'm exceeding the rating of 300 watts on the input for several hours straight. I don't recommend doing that, but it's handling it so far. I am very impressed with the endurance of this unit. It's handled everything that I've thrown at it so far. I'm going to do this for about another three days, and then that will be the end of the long-term endurance part of this test. After about four days of really hammering this machine to see what it can do, it's not shown any signs of fatigue or any problem whatsoever. It's a little bit warm in my shop, so I went ahead and rigged up a server fan to get some extra cooling on the case. I've got it plugged into the DC port there, through a DC regulator, and there's the server fan just taped on the side temporarily. I'm also measuring the temperature inside the case while it's in operation using that thermocouple right there. Right now it's in the 80s, but earlier when it was under heavy load it was around 100 degrees, so quite warm inside. And I've got the thermocouple inside the case over here on the left where it gets the hottest. Pros, cons, and final thoughts. I have really hammered this Pecron E600 LFP for several days straight most of the time running an air conditioner while simultaneously charging from three or four solar panels. Here are the results. Cons first. The only problem I could find was in the MPPT charge controller behavior. One day of the test while monitoring the solar panel input voltage. I saw that the voltage had collapsed down to about 30 volts when it should have been around 50 or 60. This is for three 12 volt solar panels in series. After observing this for a while I did not see the controller reset or make any effort to recover. In its defense, the battery was still getting some charge, but at a greatly reduced rate. By the way, the battery was not full. Also, I have seen this behavior on other solar products that have an MPPT charge controller implementation. The problem was easy to fix. I just unplugged and replugged the solar panels into the unit. The charge controller reswept the panel voltage and operations returned to normal. Basically, if this happens, the user would be getting less charge power than expected and would probably replug the solar panels anyway as part of normal troubleshooting. So the pros of this unit are lithium iron phosphate cells. They are safer and have a good track record. The extra weight is not a problem for me at all. It has a good sine wave inverter with good surge capability, a clear display showing the basics such as power in, power out status. It also shows a few nifty extras like battery voltage and power factor. Dual charging inputs, plenty of ports and connectivity, and I think the cost is reasonable considering its capacity and overall performance. Final thoughts. I have bought, used, and sometimes repaired over 40 different solar generators and portable power stations down through the years. The best compliment I could give the Pecron E600 LFP is that it will now become one of my most heavily used machines. After seeing what it can do, I'm pretty impressed. I do not receive any commissions or other benefits from making this review. If you're interested in purchasing the E600, there is a discounted purchase link in the description. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Pecron for making this review possible. Please stay tuned. Hope to see you next time.